just want an answer. I just want to know if not good. This is the moment when this woman begged her boyfriend to reveal where he had hidden her 21-month-old baby, Lonzie Barton. I just want to know if my kid's coming back to me, how I'm going to get him back. However, what the investigation officers are failing to notice is that this mother, Lana Barton, is the one responsible for her child's disappearance. And this entire moment's designed to play with the minds of officers. Is that how you want your child to be remembered in your mind? It ain't how I want to remember him. Because the way I want to remember him, he looks like that. And you know what? When we put this out, do you think that baby was alive? Well, this is just a peek inside one of the most complicated interrogations of all time. Because there are moments when dangerous suspects act creepier than you could imagine. Number 1. Mysterious Disappearance of 21-Month-Old Lonzie Barton On July 24, 2015, Lana Barton's boyfriend, William Eberin, called 911 to report his stolen car. Jacksonville, number one, Orange Bond. Yeah, Yes, I want to report um, a car stolen. It's a 95 Honda Civic. The call took a dramatic turn when he said this. He couldn't have been told not that quick. And it's, it's um, my kid is in the back, killing in the back of the car. My what? kid is in the back of the car. Okay. What color is it? It's a bright orange. You can't miss it. 95 on the physics. If you listen closely to the intensity in Ebron's voice, you would notice how calm he sounds. Despite complaining that Lana's 21-month son was sitting in the stolen vehicle, he seems to maintain his cool. Now the story becomes even more compelling when he explains how the car was stolen. So, 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 so you, you parked your car out front, left the kid in the car real fast, went inside, came back out, your car's... However, in reality, it was something else. The officers contradicted Ebron's statement by showing him a video. Alright, so now you're going to see a car coming this way, leaving. And I'm pretty sure it's your car. You're coming back nine minutes later when you're saying you're calling 911. According to the surveillance footage, Ebron's stolen car was seen heading in one direction on the road. What astonished the investigation officers the most was that nine minutes later, Ebron was caught running on the other side of the same road. This footage immediately made the officers suspicious of Ebron's story, as the proximity between this footage and calling 911 was extremely close, thus making Ebron one of the prime suspects in Lonzi's disappearance. However, the case became more intense when for several months no one was able to locate or identify where the child was hidden. The Jacksonville, Florida community also offered a reward of $12,300 for anyone who managed to reveal the child's location. Yet there was no answer until one of the officers applied a serious method. You know where that boy is at? I'll bet you a million dollars or whatever you want. I'll lay it out right here. You tell me you know where he's at. You are lying to her, you're scared or whatever, you know what happened. Where's her son? Where's her son? Finally, Ebron decided to spill the beans and revealed the actual truth. According to his statement, Ebron and Lonzi's mother were having sex in their bedroom, but what they failed to realize is that Lonzi was left alone in the bathroom. After a few moments, when they went in to check on Lonzi, it was late. The 21-month-old child had already drowned in their bathtub. However, what happened after will give you goosebumps. Instead of taking the child to the hospital, Lonzi's mother decided to go to her job as a stripper, leaving Edward alone with the drowned child. Feeling panicked from the situation, Edward drove the child to the Bayard area and buried Lonzi under a pile of massive tires in the woods. As a result, Ebron was convicted for 20 years in prison, and Lonzi's mother was convicted for five years in prison for child neglect. Number 2. Mastermind Behind Laura Grillo's Murder On November 13, 2015, 37-year-old Laura Grillo dropped her children off at school and returned home in Rowlett, Texas. Just one week away from marrying to her fiancé, John Mokras, Laura was standing in the kitchen, excited to make something special for John. However, before she could cook the entire meal, Stay on me, Drew. Clear. Clear. Got blood in the kitchen. Blood down this hall. 
We got one down, shell casing on the floor. Laura was shot in the head by an unknown person. After neighbors heard a gunshot, they called 911 to check what happened. Soon, her husband, who was outside during this incident, arrived at the scene. Listen to me, it looks like a gunshot wound. That is all I can tell you. Now check this out. John's fiance had just been shot, but there's no pain or emotional reaction on his face. Furthermore, when the police asked him if he had cameras installed in his house, he said this. Do you have cameras on the house? Yes. Do they record? Uh, they used to. I don't know if they do. So, no reaction to the death of his wife. Cameras were not working, and the husband was not present inside the house. All of this combined convinced the investigation officers to consider John as their first suspect. What would be the motive for someone to come in the house, attack Laura, come and take her? No idea. Surprisingly, the officers believed John's story when he said there were around $8,000 to $9,000 in the safe before Laura was shot. This made them think that this act must have been connected with a burglary attempt. Moreover, the officers also obtained surveillance footage of John when Laura was shot. He was seen shopping in a home renovation store in Dallas County. According to John, he went there to purchase supplies for his home remodeling business and met two of his employees, Jesus Trevino and James Valedo. Thus, he claimed he was not involved in this murder. But John's face painted a different picture. When officers decided to dig deep into his background, they found a significant clue. If you look at the surveillance footage again, there was no sign of the two employees. And when the police matched the phone records of these employees with the time when Laura was shot, there was no difference. The situation became more suspicious when one of the employees, Jesus Trevino, seemed to enjoy the entire interrogation. Jesus seemed a little too laid back, you know, just laughing and joking around in the interview room. Some of that stuff didn't really make sense. However, when the police took both employees into custody, one of them, James Valedo, finally told the truth. All right, when um, Jesus first mentioned anything about this, I disregarded it. Mm -hmm. I thought he was just about to smoke. He shows up in the morning and we get in the car and we go. The whole time, I'm like, I'm still thinking he's bull****. Even when he gets there, mm -hmm. exactly, he does his thing, I heard nothing. Mm -hmm. And when he gets back in the car, what does he say to you? That's right. That's what I said, yeah, he shot him. Is that how I did it, or? He just shot her. In head. James explained that he was hired as a driver, and Jesus Trevino was hired as a shooter for Laura. Astonishingly, Laura's fiancé was the mastermind behind this act and paid around $15,000 for this murder. Right. But it's pretty obvious that John ordered it. Yeah. Did Jesus ever say how much uh, John paid him for it? He was um, boasting about something about fifteen grand. As a result, John and the shooter were sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole, and James was sentenced to 25 years in prison for testifying against the two. So, what are your views on the chilling interrogations of the century? Tell us in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and press the like button if you like this video. Thank you so much for watching.